Hey folks, this is Mary. Welcome back to my channel. So I was getting ready to go out to dinner last night and when I stepped out on my porch, I found this box. I did not want to go to dinner. <laughs> I wanted to come back in the house and open my box, but I didn't. I went out with my friends and I had a lovely time and I'm so glad I went, but now it is time to open the box. Ooh, and I have a terrible habit of showing my address on screen, so I need to stop doing it. Okay, so I'm taking the paper out and I'm not looking at it. I'm taking the ink out. And what did we say? We are going to swatch the inks first and then talk about the goodies. So I have not looked at the goodies. I have set them aside. And let's see. Ooh, and this is that sticky bubble wrap. I just love it. Or maybe all bubble wrap is like that. I don't know. This one just seems especially sticky. You know, I think saran wrap is missing out on the market. They need to make some sticky bubble wrap. Or perhaps they already do and I just don't know about it yet. Hmm. Okay. So let's see what we have here. <gasps> Ooh. I'm so excited. You might remember from Ink Flights Past that in April, they do an April Fool's Ink Flight. And I have watched other people's unboxing of these videos, and I never have a clue what any of the inks are. And in the weekly um, ink journal email, when they have that ink at the bottom and you have to guess what it is, I could never guess what it is. So... Let's see what we have. Um, April Fools. Are you ready for a tricky and inky challenge? Oh, I don't know if I am. Okay, this is the third annual Secret Ink Flight. We have to use our detection skills to guess the brand and color of each ink. And then you can submit your guesses on the form. All right, so we will swatch the inks and they're just numbered. Gosh, this one says number, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought it said ink number 51, but it's ink flight 51. Okay, so let's see, number three, two, I'm just gonna put them in numerical order. So three, four, six, one, oops, one, two, seven and five, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, oh, I'm so nervous. So there's a little description of each one. Oh, I need my, I need my sample holder. And he's right here at the ready. Alrighty. I just don't feel like I know enough different inks to to be able to tell about the inks, you know? I don't I don't feel like I have a broad enough experience with the inks to be able to tell. But let's see. So, gosh, what should I call this? So, I'm going to call this ink flight 51 mystery ink number one. And then I'll leave a spot underneath so um, I can write it in once we figure out what it is. All right. Swatchy, swatchy. Ooh, so nervous. Ooh, it's a nice dark green. It feels fairly wet. It's sliding off the Q-tip very nicely. Now it seems to be lightening. Let's see if we get a drip. Mmm, no drip. I'm gonna re-dip. Oh 
now we get a drip. Okay. And you might ask why I do the drips. Well, number one, they're fun. And also number two, it's really good at showing sheen because the sheen usually happens where the ink has pooled. So if you just swatch it on the card, it might not be thick enough to show the sheen. So the drips really help with that. Okay. Just giving you guys a look at this ink here. Hmm. Oh, let me read the um, description. We have some clues. From the green mountains to the Pacific, this teal ink puts you in a golden state of mind. <gasps> well, that has to be California teal. How can I not recognize one of my favorite inks? Hmm, and it looks like there's some sheen coming out on it. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna put him aside and see how he looks when he dries. Oops, excuse me. Okay. Number two. So what did I say? This is ink flight 51 and this is mystery ink number two. Hmm. It's not coming off the, the nib very well. Oh dear, I don't think I left enough space on that other card to write the name in. I'm bad about that. Let's see. So this one seems to be pink. And I don't have a lot of pinks in my collection. Okay, I'm gonna leave space. And this is a, this is a light pink, kind of a, a bubblegum pink maybe. It's very pretty. But again, I don't know that many pinks, so I don't know which pinks might be like this. Honestly, the only one I can think of that I have any experience with is um, Faber-Castell pink, just their regular pink ink, which is very pretty. It's just kind of a middle of the road bubblegum pink, but I really like it. Okay, what's our clue for this one? Mark Twain would say this pink ink is a color the blind can see. A color the blind can see. I don't know. Ooh. I don't think I'm very good with clues either. <laughs> but it's okay. That was number two. Number three. Ooh, and this is a blue one. We like blue. Yes, we do. Ooh, maybe too much ink. Okay. So, ink flight number 51. Mystery ink number three. Wow, I'm liking this already. It's a very pretty blue. Hmm. Mm. It's feeling nice and wet, very smooth. A dark blue. I would not say there are any hints of purple in it. No blue-black. Let's see if we can get a drip. Hmm. So he is dripping. And what is our clue? Oh, say can you see the sheen of this stellar blue ink? That must be Colorverse Stars and Stripes, which I don't have a sample of yet. 
I've been thinking about getting one and, and I think this is it. And I think this is a, um, yes, well, the clue just said that it has sheen. I was going to say that I, I think this one is a sheener. So yes, it is a sheener. Mm, very nice. Very pretty. Okay. All right. Number four. Maybe we should look at it in the vial. What does it look like in the vial? It looks dark blue. But it seems kind of kind of thin kind of watery you know how some inks really coat everything like this one has really coated the vial but this one I just shook it and it is not coating the vial so that's very interesting okay let's see get my nib down in there So, ink, oops, flight number 51, and this is mystery ink number four. I hate the way I make my case. My case looks so awful. Okay, so this is also a dark blue, just like the last one we had, but it, it seems much... I don't know, much thinner, much less saturated, more watery, more fluid. I don't know how to describe that. And it's certainly not clinging to the sides of the vial like the last ink did. All right, it's feeling very, very smooth, very wet. Hmm. I'm going to re-dip. Hmm. You know, was it last week, last Sunday, I, I opened my, oops, ooh, I don't want to drop it. I opened my bottle of Colorverse Cotton Blue, and this kind of reminds me of that. I don't know. It has some interesting shading. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see. We'll let him dry. Number five, or oh, we're looking at it in the vial. This seems like a dark red and not too clingy, more clingy than the last ink, but not as clingy as the ink before that, if that makes sense. Oh shoot, I guess I should have put my little, um, my little rings on the top. Oh well, we'll do that later. Oh! Oh dear. I'm just all ahead of myself and all flustered. I didn't read the clue for this guy. Okay, number four. No polyester here. Clothe your paper in this 100% heavenly blue ink. Ooh, so yes, I think that is cotton blue. Ooh, very nice. Okay, where was I? Trying out this one. And it doesn't wanna come up to my nib. What is this one? Number five. Mystery ink. Number five. And this one is looking brown. Hmm. 
That's very nice. It feels very wet. It's kind of a dark reddish brown. Would we call that maroon? And we're getting a big old drip. Hmm. Very pretty. I don't know. It's drying in a very interesting way. And it is flowing across the card. Oh my goodness. Can you see that? Hmm. Well, we'll see. Have to see how he does. After he dries. All right, two more to go. And I have ink all over my fingers. For some reason, I always get ink all over my middle finger. And today I've got it on my thumb. Why do I always get ink on my middle finger? And you can see there's like every ink, all colors, on my finger. I don't understand. Let's see, okay. I'm trying to read the name of the ink, but of course, there is no name on this ink. Oh, we're supposed to look at it in the vial. I've got the lid off, but I'll live dangerously. So yeah, this one is not coating the vial either. Wow. But that, um, that blue one really did cover the vial. All right. Ooh, wow, this one's really light. It's green, but it's very light. Ink flight number 51. And this is number six. And shoot, I have not remembered to leave space on any of them except for the pink one. Uh, well, we'll fit the names on there somewhere. This is a very interesting looking ink. I'm seeing some nice shading. Oh. Very cool. Now I wonder, there is at least one green ink in that new Colorverse series, the Colorverse Project. I wonder if this is one of those Colorverse Project inks. But I only have the uh, the blue cotton and the milky lavender, so I don't know how the other colors are. All right. Oh, I'm forgetting to read our hints. Shoot. Uh-oh. Okay. I think I'm confusing myself here. Okay, bear with me. <laughs> I've lost a card. Um, that was number six. What did I do with number five? Oh, here it is. My goodness. Okay. Whew. I am just, I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. Okay, number five. Hypothetically, this ink might be the cause of the universe's rapid expansion. So is that like the Big Bang? That's gotta be a Colorverse ink. But I'm not sure which one. Okay. And then, um, uh-oh, I did it again. I've just lost number six. What did I do with it? Oh, here it is. Oh, my goodness. Number six. Generations of counts and baronesses enjoy this ink inspired by the fruit of these Mediterranean plants. Hmm. Avocado? Is that avocado green? Is the avocado Mediterranean? I don't know. Okay. Down to our last ink.
Oh, we didn't look at it in the vial. So he is looking rather brown. And also not clinging to the vial. Okay. Ooh, light brown, kind of orange. And, oh, I think the ink is getting on the pen, and that's why, because my finger's right there. So whatever ink is on the pen, it's going to get on my finger. So this is Mystery Ink number seven. All right. Kind of a light caramel brown with definitely some hints of orange and it's feeling kind of dry it is not wanting to come off the q-tip so I don't think we're gonna get a drip nope let me try again mm, a teeny little one okay and what is his clue after a long day, retire to the royal living quarters to enjoy a snifter of this spirited ink. Hmm. So it's got to be some kind of, I don't know, scotch or whiskey or something or another. I don't know. It has some nice shading on it. Okay. So we are going to set those aside to finish drying and we're going to look at our goodies. Ooh, and have a sip of tea. Alrighty. Let me see. Ah. Ce n'est pas un stylo. This is not a pen. <laughs> yep. I don't have one of those at all. Not me. I am not a Bic owner. Yes, I am. I love my Bics. And this is my Bic with the giant tip, the crystal 1.6 millimeter. Love it. But that's funny. We were just talking the other day about um, Crocodile Dundee and how this guy in New York pulls a knife on him and he said that's not a knife <laughs> and he pulls out this I don't know it's like a machete or something <laughs> oh so funny and we have a lovely notebook I'm gonna take it out of the plastic so there won't be a glare oh crinkly pardon the crinkles So Tomaway River Paper, A6, dot grid. Are we in focus? I think we are, maybe. That's better. Made in Japan. Ooh. Sake Technical Paper Company. Hmm. It's so cute. Hmm. This would make a lovely ink journal. Okay, what does this say? This says new sub dot grid. So does that mean that they're little squares? The printing color is indigo. A6 five millimeter dot grid, 160 pages with white paper. Hmm. So let's look at these indigo sub dots. Can we focus on that? Let's see how good my camera is. Hmm, they definitely look indigo, but they're so small I can't tell if they're round or square. But it's definitely a nice subtle dot. Are we focusing? <laughs> my camera's like, what? What is that? It's white. <laughs> 
I just can't focus on a big white square. Hmm. But it does lay nicely flat. And um, it's very nice. And I am, um, oh, I'm trying to wrap my head around um, an, an ink, an ink encyclopedia, an ink catalog. So I have a little uh, planner cover that's an A6 that I think I'd like to use. I was thinking about using a pocket one, but I don't think that's quite big enough. So I think A6 might be a good size. So this should be very helpful. Very cool. All righty. So let's take a look at our mystery inks. Hopefully now they've all dried. And let me see. Ooh, ow, that was my elbow. All right, number one. I'm thinking this is California teal. It has some lovely pink sheen. Very pretty, a very bright green. And if this is California teal, I don't know why they call it a teal. It's green, but I love it. I don't care what they call it. A rose by any other name would be just as lovely. All right, number two, this is a that lovely pink ink, kind of a bubblegum pink, pencil eraser pink. Now it does have some interesting green sheen going on here. And I don't think that Faber-Castell pink ink that I have had a sheen like this. So I don't know what this guy is. And number three, and this is the one, I think it's the Colorverse Stars and Stripes. And it is a beautiful blue with some reddishy, orangey sheen. Very pretty. I love that blue. I don't care if I have 15 different shades of the same blue. I love it. Okay, number four. I've got cards scattered all over the place. And the wind is blowing a little bit, so I'm trying not to let them blow away. This is Mystery Ink number four. And I think this is Colorverse Cotton Blue. It's a very soft blue with some nice shading, and I don't see any sheen. And... Uh-oh, I'm looking for number five. Okay. Oh, God. I keep losing my cards. Number five. And he's still drawing a little bit. Goodness. And he has some some hints of something going on there around the edges. Maybe some little greenish tinges around the edge. Kind of a, a nice maroon color. And this might be the cause of the universe's rapid expansion. So I'm guessing some kind of Colorverse ink. They have so many space-related inks, but I really don't know. Number five. And here is number six. A lovely green with some nice shading. And I don't see any sheen, but look at that writing. That does have some lovely shading on it. And this is the Counts and Baronesses Enjoy This Ink Inspired by the Fruit of These Mediterranean Plants. So I'm thinking maybe avocado? I don't know. And last but not least, this is um, the, um, the Royal... After a long day, retire to the Royal Living Quarters to enjoy a snifter of this spirited ink. Now, I wonder if this is the one that um, uh, Carrie from Pens and Tea likes. What is that? Like um, the Somebody in Sun Scotch or something like that? Wow, I've always wanted to get a sample of that one, too. Is that a Mont Blanc ink? I don't know. But I'm sure there's more than one ink that's named after an alcohol. It's very pretty, kind of a light caramel brown. It has some nice shading, but again, I don't see any sheen. Very pretty. Alrighty. 
Well, that is our haul for this month. And it's very exciting with the, um, with the mystery aspect of it. So cool. And I'm, I'm just a terrible guesser. I'm just terrible. So I'll be interested to see what other guesses people come up with because, I mean, <laughs> the ones that I, that I have, I think I know, but other than that, I have no idea. So it'll be fun to see how this month plays out. And um, I hope you enjoy and, and feel free to play along and post your guesses in the comments and we'll see if we can figure these out. And I look forward to seeing the results at the end of the month. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.